Hi friends. In this tutorial, I am going to go over how like your basic Tinkercad environment works. Um, to start with, I'm going to start in the upper left hand corner at the Tinkercad logo. As you can see, I'm in a workspace already, but I want to go back to the dashboard. So once I click on that logo, um, the first thing that you will see is your dashboard. And now if you're a new user, you don't have much of anything here in your dashboard. Um, but if you've been in it as long as I do, I have been, you will see that you have many items in here. Okay, as I scroll down, you can see I have pages and pages and pages of um, designs in my um, dashboard. I'm going to go into the stand, the one I had open. Okay, I'm just going to click Tinker This. As it opens up, it brings me to my work plane. And my work plane is the same as my print bed on my printer. I can go to Edit Grid and I can adjust the size of my work plane to match uh, the printer that I'm using. If your printer is not listed, you can select um, either the default one or I believe you can do custom and you can put in your width and length on your grid. This way you know what you're working with and if you're outside the parameters of your printer. Okay. When you click update grid, it's going to just change the size of your grid. And if you didn't notice, you can also change your units here um, within your grid properties. Okay. I just showed you how the Tinkercad logo, no matter what screen you're on, if you click the logo, it brings you back to your dashboard. Along the left hand side, you have your view um, controls. If I bring a block out, um, I have my zoom in. So whatever object is selected, you're going to zoom in close to the selected object. I have my plus zoom, which brings it in closer. My minus zoom, which brings it out. Okay. My perspective view, the graphic, and then my view cube. Um, some people find the view cube to be very helpful. Um, I'm just uh, clicking and rotating. I'm holding the click button down okay, and I can look at it from all sides. If this is not working on your computer, I know my students use Mac computers, sometimes we have to enable the right click before that will work for them. If I click on the house, it puts it back to the original view. Sometimes the shape menu, because my object is selected, kind of gets in my way, especially if we're working on Chromebooks. You have a little up arrow where you can hide that inspector window and it just gives you some basic functions of solid, whole, locking it, and viewing it, or hiding it, okay? So I don't encourage students to use these two um, icons here, the lock and the hide, uh, but they are there and that is what they do, okay? Um, often we do, of course, need our um, color and our hole. Notice how whenever I hover over um, a menu feature, it comes up and it shows us what that shortcut is. So the, it's giving us our keyboard shortcuts anytime we hover. So you can see that if I want to change a color and make something solid, I just hit S. Okay. If I hover over my duplicate and hit Control D in on a Mac, it's Command D. It duplicates. If I hold the Shift key down and arrow, going to move it 10 millimeters in the direction in which I'm arrowing it. And if I hover over my copy, control C on a Windows, command C on a Mac, and then I can paste command V on a Mac, control V on a Windows based computer. Again, shift and then my left arrow button, I can move that wherever I want. Okay, So you have your your shortcuts, your keyboard shortcuts, you have your menu items. Um, very, very helpful there. Okay. I can always undo and redo. I didn't like that. I can throw things in the trash. Right above my standard menu buttons that are similar to every other program we use, we have this fantastic name. If we click on it, it allows us to change it. I like to have students put down their name 
the project they are working on and the color it's going to print on the printer. I give them a variety of colors that they are able to print. So it's nice when they download it to be able to see those three things right there in um, the file ready for me to work with. Okay. If I wanna to jump to another project, I have this little piece of paper here that goes to recent designs and I get my last few designs here. You see, I've been demoing a lot, okay? Or I can create a new design here. I can also change some of the privacy or visibility right here under this new design. So in my current project, if I was making this as a template for my Google Classroom, I can change it to public, okay? Students do not have the option to change that to public. Okay. Over here on the right hand side of my menu bar, I can toggle my notes visibility on and off. Um, if you're using notes to communicate with your students, you're going to want to make sure that you remind them to leave notes visibility on. And again, you can see that, see that shift N allows you to toggle that with a keyboard. The next is our show all. If anything was hidden, um, if I select an object and I hide it, then that's going to come live and allow me to click on it to show. If nothing is hidden, then that icon will stay muted. Okay. If I have two objects that I want to make into one, I'm going to select both objects and then I'm going to group it. If I want to edit it, I can double click without ungrouping and select it. I'm going to move it just a little bit. When I click off of it, it regroups. If I do this multiple times, it's what's referred to as nesting, and that can cause some trouble with uh, for our students. I find that some of my students have a little bit of trouble with this. So if I just group this here, maybe I want to make that a whole feature, and then select those three items and group them, now the only thing I can go back to is I can move the sphere that I made a hole, but I cannot move the cylinder. So if I double click on that, I can see that I can reach that sphere and I can nudge it and move it into a different location, but I cannot access that cylinder. Once I click off, my objects regroup again. Okay, so grouping only works, that shortcut for, for modifying my grouping only works for back one. If I have multiple nests, I cannot go back multiple steps. Okay, so that's our grouping. We can select and ungroup, but you'll notice that it'll only ungroup that one iteration. My first iteration still stays grouped until I select it and I ungroup that one as well. Now, if I were to group all of them, it would make them that first iteration again. So if I were to double click, now you can see, I can see three parts to work with. When I click off, it regroups. Okay. From there, we have, if I select two objects or more, we have the ability to align. Um, when we align, a lot of times we just kind of move things based on what's already on our screen, um, but our align feature, we can actually select multiple objects, click align, and if I don't want one to move, I can select that, and you see how the grips move to that location, and now when I center them, they center on top of each other without moving that first one. And again, to do that, I have both selected. I click on that align tool, before I click any of my handles, I'm going to select the object that I do not want to move. My handles move to align with that one object, and then I can go ahead and select whichever handles I wish to use. Okay. Um, from there, I can select all my objects and I can mirror. Okay, so of course I can mirror in the X, Y, or Z direction, and we can change those around. Okay, so that's our mirror tool. And then along the top in the upper right hand side, I have import, export, and send to. You can import 3D files, 
export is the one that we use in class, or at least in my class. And we always want to make sure that we're on um, download, include everything in the design. Um, sometimes we might have to select just the selected shapes, but of course I have nothing selected right now. And if you're sending to a 3D printer like a MakerBot, um, you're going to want a um, STL file. Okay. If you're doing laser cutting, it's the SVG. Um, but if you're going to a 3D printer, it is that STL type file. Okay. Um, when we look at our helper tools, in some of the lessons and projects, it'll refer to helper tools, um, but nothing is labeled on our menu saying helper tools. Well, what that's talking about are these three tools here, the note, the work plane, the ruler, and the notes, okay? Work plane is really fantastic because we can select a work plane, and you notice the blue work plane is now on top of my blocks. And if I wanted to drag out, say, a roof and put it on top of the block, I know that the two surfaces are absolutely touching. There's no gaps in between them, so I'm not going to have any printing errors. And uh, they're right on top of each other. It makes it very, very nice as I'm building. Um, very cool thing is I can put that work plane wherever I need it to be. So if I need it to be on the side and I need to get a number, I can do that. And when I pull out um, the number, I'm going to just do number one. That number one is ready to go on that surface. So I don't have to worry so much about rotating um, and then placing because it is already right on that surface. And it doesn't even have to be a flat surface that I can choose. I can choose a curved surface as well. And you can see from the highlighted area where it's actually touching that cylinder. To put our work plane back, we just click back on an open space. The next thing you should notice is that there is a drop down for many different uh, menus. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, we usually start with basic shapes, um, just standard different shapes that we can modify and of course our whole features. Um, and then we have text and numbers, characters, connectors, OMSI hangouts, making at home, which is actually not, uh, it's more everyday objects that you can build here in the software and then you can obtain them at home and try to build as well. Um, and then we have shape library. Uh, I really like in shape generator, this extrusion tool. This is really kind of cool. Um, it's where we make all of our smiley faces. If we drop down our inspector, we can see that we have this tool here. It's just really a fun, fun tool, and it allows us to make all sorts of uh, things. We've made handles to cups with these, we've made smiles, we've made eyelashes and eyebrows and um, all sorts of stuff. So really, really uh, cool feature there. And of course, we have our menu where we can select whether it is a whole or a solid, we can change the color to it and everything, okay? So really cool tool right there. Um, and then, of course, we have our um, Shape Generator All, which, again, has some really cool, cool features in here. I particularly like the countries in the United States. You pull those out, and each one is sized exactly right or proportionally to all the others. It's a really a fun thing, way to bring geography into your work. Um, and then you have circuits, printables, Smithsonian. How cool is this? You can get Smithsonian... Uh, models. Um, if you haven't seen the video from um, Mythbusters, it's very, very cool how they're working to um, scan all sorts of stuff from Smithsonian to make it available as STLs that we can print in our classroom and allow our students to explore. Okay, and so great, great um, menus to be able to explore and work through. I'm going to switch back to basic shapes and I just want to show you how when we take out a basic shape under the inspector menu, we actually have lots of ways to control our box. We can make a radius so that box can actually all go all the way down to a sphere. So we can radius or chamfer those edges. We can 
make it boxy. Let me just zoom right into that one. We can make it boxy with our steps or we can make it really rounded. Um, and then of course we can change the size right here in the menu as well as um, the other way of course doing this is to just click right on our object and modifying it by typing right in it as well. Right into our browser, right? Um, so lots of great stuff here in Tinkercad. Really enjoy it. And of course, our ruler tool. There's a lot we can do with our ruler tool, but the basics are that um, I always select the lower left-hand corner. We can see our X direction, our Y direction, our Z direction, and any offsets that we might have. Um, very, very helpful tool. There's a lot more that it can do. I highly suggest looking at some of the tutorials on the ruler tool because it's very, very helpful. It's come a long way. Okay, so I hope that this was helpful in just seeing the overview of the Tinkercad environment and how to kind of move around within your space. If you are a teacher and you're looking to um, kind of get your classroom started, I highly, highly suggest going back to the dashboard and checking out the Learn Project under Learn, under Projects, the Let's Learn Tinkercad environment. It gives you five lessons that really works wonderfully in getting your students um, a basic foundation of Tinkercad, navigating the menus, moving around, moving, rotating, scaling, making and manipulating, that's your grouped objects, and then aligning and work plane helper. It moves them through the software to get um, really familiar with it and have a really good foundation to be successful in class with their designing work. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Enjoy a great day.